turn to Psalms chapter 150. Psalms chapter 150. And we're going to read these verses. I believe that God is uh, speaking to us right now and reminding us. You already know this word, but I believe that God is reminding you again of his uh, word. It says here, praise the Lord. Let's say praise the Lord. Uh, let's declare it. Okay, we'll turn to the person next to you and say, wake up. Uh, that's it. And let's say praise the Lord. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. It says here, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. It says, praise him in his mighty heavens. And then it says in verse 2, praise him for his acts of power. Let's say acts of power. Acts of power. And praise him for his surpassing greatness. Let's say the word surpassing. Uh, surpassing. I love that word, surpassing greatness. Then look at that verse 3 on how we ought to praise him. Praise him with a uh, with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Look at that verse four. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Let's say the word dancing. Who loves loves dancing? Yes, you guys are all quiet this morning. Uh, yep, yeah, but uh, dancing. Now, dancing before the Lord, praise Him with strings and pipe. Look at that verse 5. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals. Let's say clash of cymbals. Uh, and praise Him with a resounding cymbal. Uh, and 6, it says, let everything. Let's say let everything. <clears throat> Let's say it together. Let everything. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let's say it again. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Uh, and that's our message this morning is let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you have breath, it's time for you to reach out and praise Him. Uh, for the psalmist says, uh, for the psalmist says, praise the Lord was definitely not a cliche. Let's say cliche. Uh, it's not a cliche, but it's an ecstatic expression of uncontrollable joy. Uh, and that's what the Lord is, that's what the psalmist is saying here. Praise the Lord is not a cliche, but it's an ecstatic expression of uncontrollable joy. The word praise is derived from the Latin word, which means prize. Let's say the word prize. Uh, and it says here, it, it's, it's, it means prize. The word also means to shine. Now, have you ever seen a person that comes in and, you know, they are bright, shining. There's something about them that's going on. You know, that's how when you, when you, when you get something from someone or you're, like we, we went last week and uh, joined a, a family and uh, walked into this place. We went to dedicate this new place and boy, it was amazing. No, it was mixed emotions. I walked in and as soon as I saw it, it's like I just shut everything out and I looked at this. Tears were coming down, but not only tears of joy, but tears of like these guys have, uh, you know, uh, made it through. And I can imagine even as a builder and as a, as a carpenter, you see the paint jobs, you see everything in this house. And, you know, joy just comes in. But at the same time, too, when we lifted up the praise, it's like tears. I just couldn't contain the presence of God, you know, like of this immaculate place. But it just shows us that this is how God wants us. It's a prize. It's like you're looking at it, you know, even more greater than this. You know, it's, it's how we, we, we shine and we, we see this. And, you, you, you know, the years of hard work, the years of going through pain, the years. But then when it comes to that time where God says, hey, that's enough. I'm going to reward you. You know what? All of a sudden things just change. Now, when I was going through the situation with with the mortgages starting to go up uh, on, on June last year, like I already knew, they, they, they kept saying that we're going to have six hikes. Then straight away I knew, boom, oh God, where in the world is this? And like stress and depression just come upon. I go, God, how can I keep this thing together? You're running the church, but at the same time too, it's like I can't even take care of myself. This is just being honest with you. You know, but just God just kept going, hey, don't worry. He just had things all under control. It's like, just be steady, be stable, and trying to hear out the voice of God. And then he says, take this course. And then as soon as I, I, I got these, you know, like uh, extra hours, you know, it's all of a sudden, it's like something just broke. It's not the fact that, um, you know, that, that it, it, it was uh, uh, like a, it was like a burden. I'm trying to tell you, you know, but I felt like, you know, when I got that, second amount of uh, uh, money, I sort of said, yes, I can see that I can conquer this thing, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the burden just, just, just went away, I got up, started riding the bike, started uh, getting into the gym, but this somehow something just broke, 
Uh, but it, it's more like because you know as a person, a logical person, you know that when things like this is not going to work out, I know this is one plus one equals two, but this is not equals two. This is not going anywhere. But you know when, that, when you finally find that break, it's like all of a sudden your, your face has just changed. And my wife is just saying, he's up early in the morning. Man, I'm up. Why? Because I know something is broken. Uh, I know, and I, and I believe that each and every one of us, you need to connect into God. And so when they keep hiking these things, I just bring it on, bring it on. And I'm like going, why? Because God, the things that God does, it's like I'm expecting a different kind of miracle. But God goes, you just stay focused. I'm going to guide you. And I believe every single one of us needs to tap into him to guide us. Where are we going with this? Uh, don't stress about it. You are already victorious. Can you say amen? Uh, you are already victorious. The victory is in you. But let me tell you, Satan is coming every day in your life to attack that victory. Uh, so you may sit there and go, ah, oh, nothing's going to happen to me. You might not have it as a mortgage or anything, but you may go, hey, I got all this sorted out. But then you got a sickness that you're dealing with and you're going, God, how can I get free? Let me take you back. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Can you say amen? Uh, the best is yet to come. Can you say amen? Uh, wars, whatever is coming, it's already been in there for over 2,000 years. Uh, wars, earthquakes, you see it. Even when people turn away from the Lord, I watched this on, you know, how I'm not, nothing against the Brazilian people, but they went ahead and they did this crazy thing of making a day just before the day of, of April where Jesus Christ died and crucified. They decided to make this production that was all about the devil. Uh, and, 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 and it's crazy how, you know, these things that people could come up with, you know, putting up all these vicious things, you know, coming out of the graves. If you watched it, when I looked and I go, oh, don't worry, the enemy is still trying to attack the victory of Jesus Christ. They didn't finish the program, but floods started to come. Why? Because this God is so powerful. Can you say amen? He will not leave his name in vain. You want to go down that track? you know what, you're going to be destroyed. And even in our place up in Sydney, you're going to have this matter dress or whatever it is. You know, that stuff is evil stuff. Uh, we as a church need to stand up and pray against it. Can you say amen? No, uh, it's not like, oh God, I'm feeling good or whatever. It's not about us. It's about the King of Kings. And God has placed every single one of us to look at it and go, there's something wrong about that. We start praying against it. Why? Because God by himself will win the battle by himself. So if we can't beat him, let's join him. Can you say amen? Uh, and that's what God is like saying here, looking at it. You know, like he's bringing that joy, but in different ways. My question for you, are you still depressed this morning? Are you still going through something this morning? Something you can't handle, a situation in your house? You know what, can I tell you this morning, don't even worry about it, just carbon prayer. It's an enemy's attack to stop you from getting into that place. Can you say amen? Uh, the word also means shine. It's to make a show by raving. Let's say the word raving. Uh, who loves raving? Uh, celebrating. Uh, you know, lifting up. Yes, we've done it. You look it out in the, in the games and, you know, when they start winning, even the, the, the soccer games, it's like two or Two and one, or, you know, like the wins. But every single goal is like, everybody's raving. Uh, but God expects this with himself. To praise the Lord is to prize him. To praise the Lord is to rave about him. And as only, the only one worthy of the glory and honor. Look at this. We sometimes complain about the weather. Uh, we complain about the government. We even complain about the, the next generation, the young generation. Uh, we complain about bad customer service. We complain about telemarketers. Who hates telemarketers? Uh, those robocalls, you answer it, and then the machine is like right there. Yeah, we complain about that. Uh, we complain about people who cut, cut in line. You're standing in the, in the post office, and all of a sudden, they just walk right in the front of you. Complain about that. I complain about that. Uh, we complain about uh, uh, feeling cold. We complain about our packages and letters not arriving on time. We complain about the traffic. We even complain about connecting the Wi-Fi. Can you say amen? 
Uh, you know, when you're not connected, you know, it's like, what's going on? We didn't pay the bill or whatever it is. But let me take you to Acts chapter 16. The early disciples, when they were thrown into prison, let's say prison, uh, for the name of Jesus Christ, they didn't feel sorry about themselves. But the Bible says they praise the Lord. Can you say amen? They praise the Lord despite of their what? Their circumstances. Now think about this. When the Apostle Paul, you know, and, uh, and his colleague just come into a place and you see a, a lady doing witchcraft and she's out there, you know, making money for all these rich people. And he comes along and she comes and she follows him and she says, these are great men of God. These are great men of God. These are great men. Paul already knows that you are a great man of God, but you don't need the affirmation of demons to say that for you. Can you say Amen. Uh, and Paul turns around and he says, in the name of Jesus, he didn't use his name. He said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Uh, and the Bible says that she come out. And then the whole crowd flogged in. They took Paul and, and Silas to this place. And they took them to the magistrates. The magistrates at the same time too were on their side. Took, locked them in the innermost cells. The Bible says they were locked with stocks. You know, that means that even the tension that they try to break out of this, it gets even more tighter. And, you know, they were throwing in there, beating in that place. But the Bible says that at night, before midnight, they sang hymns. Let's say the word hymns. Uh, not only sang hymns, but they praised God despite of their circumstances. And what happened? You know, God heard it from heaven and the doors of prison opened up. Nah, and even the man that, that probably even beaten them turned around. He was about to take their, his life. But Paul turns around and he says, don't do anything that will harm yourself. You need to join us to praise the King of Kings. Can you say amen? Uh, you know, the people around you are seeing what's going on in our lives. But they want to say, hey, what's going on in this person's life? We need to, you know, like have that kind of joy. First one says here, initiates that we are to do it everywhere let's say everywhere uh, do what we are to praise the lord everywhere uh, even in your homes can i ask you this do you actually praise them at home uh, because what happens from monday all the way to sunday it's going to reflect when you come into church can you say amen uh, and let me remind you some of this too that we're not only going to praise here that's what we're going to be doing in heaven uh, so if we're not used to doing it here, how are we going to do it in heaven? Can you say amen, church? Uh, it says here, praise God in heaven and on earth. Now uh, They praise Him. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him on heaven and earth. That is saying to us, praise Him everywhere. Okay, so why do we praise Him? Because we are called. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are called to praise Him. Uh, you are called to praise Him, not only just praise Him, but enthusiastically about God for at least two reasons. Now, we praise Him for, who, for what He does. Now, we praise Him for His acts of power. That's what verse 2 says. Now, God's protection. Let's say the word protection. Now, who protects you? Uh, you may have all the armies around you. You may have China. You may have all these armies come against you and, and, and trying to take you. You know, if they want to take you, they cannot take you. Uh, but who's the one that's going to protect us? God. Can you say amen? God's going to protect us. You, know, you see, when David was coming through, and we're reading this on, uh, on, on Samuel, you know, that David comes through and he takes on all these nations. He not only takes on Hadassah, Hadassah, the name of this king, the son of Zorah, or Rohab, you know, the king of, of Zobah. The Bible says that not only takes them, but then he also takes a, a thousand, you know, takes down a, a, a hundred charioteers and also chariots. He takes and 20,000 uh, foot soldiers. But the Bible says he only takes a hundred chariots. Now, how can you build an army like this? You've got a nation here. It's like the more horses that you take is the more, the more you're protected. But God commanded the Israelites to the kings. Don't take too many horses or chariots with you. Why? Because you will depend on those things. The same thing with us as a church. God is saying, hey, we love, we love our government. We love what they're doing. We love all these things. We may be a powerful West nation, but God is saying, we ought not to trust in those things. We ought to trust in God. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? Uh, and this is what God is reminding us, church. We need to open our eyes and see, okay, whatever is coming, you know, the world is going through such a chaos. 
but we as people of the Lord, we say, hey, God, we trust in you. Uh, we believe in you. Take that time to what? To praise him for his protection. Praise him for his provision. Let's say provision. Now, who's providing for you? God is making all these provisions happen. He's bringing it to you, bringing it to myself. Praise God for his miracles. Uh, praise God for his character. Praise God for his creativity. The things that he is doing in your family, your kids, all these amazing things that they're doing. Who's doing that? It's God that's working within them. Praise God for his sovereignty, God's power. We are to praise him today for what he's done in our life, and so we should. Can you say amen? Uh, the second thing we ought to praise him is praise him for who he is. It says here, praise him for the surpassing greatness, who he is. He is God Almighty. He created the universe. You know, we cannot even comprehend the fullness of God. Now, Psalms 145 verse 3 says here, Great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can what can fathom. We cannot even begin to fathom this God that we serve. Psalms 147 verse 5 says this, Great is the Lord Almighty in power. His understanding has no limit. When we praise God for who He is, we are recognizing, let's say the word recognizing. Uh, we are recognizing his surpassing greatness. Now, the Hebrew indicates this, the greatness of abundant magnitude. Let's say magnitude. Uh, that word in magnitude. Now, look at this. I want you to look at these, these verses. Perhaps you are like me. We have this tendency uh, to rush into the next thing. Uh, we rush into the next best thing. You know, okay, we got this time, we got this, and now we're rushing into this. But you don't want to fall into this, 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 this other problem that we have in Psalms 131. I'm going to read this to you and become anti-Psalms uh, 131. It says here, uh, my heart is not proud. Uh, look at that first one. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. Uh, I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. This is the, the, what the writer is, the psalmist is writing. And he goes in verse 2, but I have calmed and quieted myself. Look, it's like he's getting into a time with the Lord. I have calmed and quieted myself. He goes, I am a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am, I am content. Then he says in this last verse, verse 3, Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. Uh, but look at this. You can turn this around and, 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 and write it as an anti-psalmist in verse 1, and you'll be writing it like this about self. Uh, it says, my heart is proud. You know, you're absorbed of yourself instead of my heart is not proud. It's like you're, my heart is proud. Uh, I'm self-absorbed of myself. Look at that, that second one. My eyes are haughty. Uh, you know, my eyes are not haughty. But here, if you, if you go anti psalms my eyes are haughty. It's like I look down on everybody else. Look at this. I'm going to bring a point here. And I chase things after things too great and too difficult for me. So, of course, I am noisy and I'm restless. Are you restless this morning? Yeah. You know, and, and this is what the enemy likes to, 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 to come and make us restless about things. Worried about this, worried about this. But God's are going, hey, I've got to stay calm in the presence of the Lord. I've got to feel His power. Can you say amen? Who wants to feel the Lord's power this morning? Uh, it comes naturally. You know, God's power over us. Uh, like a hungry infant fussing. Have you seen a child that's fussing all the time? You go to the, to, 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 to the supermarket. They want this, want that. Now, this is, this is anti-Psalmist uh, 1, 1, 131. Like a hungry infant fussing over the mother's lap, like a hungry infant, I'm restless with demands and worries. I scatter my hopes onto anything and everybody all the time. Are you feeling this this morning? Let me tell you, we can become self-absorbed with ourselves if we do not praise Him. Can you say amen? Uh, we can become self-absorbed about ourselves if we do not worship Him with a sincere heart. You know, and this is the cry of our, our hearts. You know, as we study this book on, of 1 Samuel, it's like having that sincere heart. You know, so David, even though when Usa was struck down by God because they did it the wrong way, 
you know, when they try to carry it, you know, the, the, the ark of the Lord back to Israel, to Jerusalem, the city of David, and they were trying to bring it back, but Usa got struck by the Lord, put to death, because they did it the wrong way, you know, and Usa's name, it means strength, he had this confidence, like I've known God, I've done this all the time, you know, and we can get into that place where we do church all the time. So I've done this all the time. I'm sick of it. But let me tell you, you know, that's self-absorbed. It starts to say, you know, look, I know this. It's like without even knowing. But your flesh is like that. My flesh is like that. But we need to tap into like David, you know. And then when they had this production, where this big production, and David, the Bible says, you know, like that, he sits there, you know, with his, his crown. And he sits there with his, his robes as a king, you know, and bringing the ark. They brought it the wrong way. And, you know, he didn't, it's sort of like a, a picture that he didn't humble himself. And he's coming, okay, I'm king, and everybody else is just normal human beings. And then what happened? Death came over this. And David says these words, how can I bring the ark of God to me? Why? Because he had a sincere heart. God could see the depths of his heart. How can I do this? How can I bring the ark of God? I need God. I want God to come to, to, to where I am. And he even says, how can I live in a house made of cedar while the, while the Lord's ark is out in a tent? He's looking at this. But can you see the sincerity of his heart? And then one of the most powerful things that we see in this production is that when he realizes, the Bible says he puts on his priest linen. Uh, what, what is that telling us? It's like he's taking off all his like, okay, God, we're going to make this big, but we're going to turn around. I'm not going to come as a king. I'm not going to come as like, you know, like a, a great CEO of a company. I'm not going to come as, you know, this great person who has all this knowledge. I'm going to come in my linen robes. I'm going to come humble, worship the King of Kings. Can you say amen? amen? And I believe every single one of us, no matter what condition, um, no matter where, what background that you have, can I encourage you, do what David did. He had a heart that was sincere. He wanted to know self-absorbing himself and thinking that it's me. I'm bigger. I'm, I don't have these haughty eyes bigger than anybody else or looking down at anybody. I'm going to come and worship just as everybody else, can you say amen? amen? And what happened? The blessing of the Lord came upon them. You know, the blessing of the Lord. Do you want God to move? I know that the Lord has moved in a powerful way in our church. I could see the blessings of God just coming through. And you know what? All these things, like I was saying to, to this, this, uh, this couple on the, on the weekend, then I said to them, you know what? We don't worship these things. But this is a byproduct. This is the fruition of the faith that we have in God. Uh, why? We'll be like, just like Job. Even if God takes away all this materialistic things. And look at him. Took away all his kids. Destroyed them. We would never ever, I don't think we'll ever experience what Job had. Nah, taking away all his kids. Taking away all his houses. Taking, come even to write to his three best mates that are supposed to be there for him. And even they said, hey, you must have did something that upset God. Nah, not only that, sickness come upon him. Can you imagine scratching yourself, you, you know, and, and all over, you know, your body with all these sores coming out of you. I guess that no one can ever be like Job, but what did he do? Even the wife, the last one standing. You know what? You're going to get to that face. And I, I believe that God's going to, you know, allow this to happen to us to the last phase where all you got is going, you haven't got your pastor anymore. You haven't got the person next to you. God's like going, hey, you only just got me. And he's looking down at some of us and goes, hey, who are you going to turn to? Are you going to turn to your knowledge? Are you going to turn to your experience? Or are you going to turn to God? Because you know what Job said? He goes, if you only accept only the, the good things. What about the bad times? Uh, you know, how can you curse God? Now, this is the wife. You know, I'm sure she meant well. But at the end of it, you know, it came to a place where it was just Job and God. And I believe that God is taking every single one of us to that place. Uh, why? Because there's one day, church, that you're going to be standing alone. You know, when you pass away, you're going to be sitting there, standing there. Your body's going to be lying down there. You know, I was reading this on Chuck Nitzler when he was bringing this on the day that you get taken away. You know, people think that this is it. Once you're destroyed, that's it. No, no, no. 
He was even saying, reading up on this. I was listening to this on radio. And then he goes, you'll be standing there looking at your body. There's no, no more body, but your soul is gone to be either with the Lord or you're going the other way. Uh, it lives on, church. You're not going to be there saying, where's my pastor? Where's my husband? Where's my wife? Where's my sons? Where's my daughters? Where's the house of prayer? Where's everything? You're going to be standing there by yourself. And today I'm preparing you for that day, that when that day comes, you will remember, hey, this was preached in church. Why? It was not just for myself. It's not to give you a good sermon or to hype you up, to get into, no, no, it's a time for you to connect with God and say, God, I want to praise you. I want to worship you. Jesus says everything will fade away, but his word will not fade away. Can you say amen? Uh, so why are you working so hard sometimes? You know, I know we have to pay our bills, but we've got to remind ourselves, God, it's about you, Jesus. If this day you snatch me out, I'm ready to come and be in your presence. Can you say amen, church? Uh, are you going to worship the Lord? Uh, Jesus says this in Luke chapter 19, verse 40. He goes, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. If you stay quiet, these tears will, will cry out. Uh, it's like, why, 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 why is this? You know those stones that Jesus was riding on that donkey? Like as we are coming, we're getting ready for April. Then those that donkey that he was riding past, they would have stones that are on the side. But the Pharisees will come and they would uh, rebuke the people. They would say, hey, what are you guys doing? And the Pharisees had all these bad intentions. And Jesus says, if they stay quiet, the stones will start worshiping. Uh, what is he saying? The creation will start worshiping him. Why? Because this God that we serve, we haven't even began to, to know how much he is. But all he is giving you and me an opportunity to come and say, hey, worship the King of Kings. Can you say amen, church? Uh, 